ओम नमो भगवते it's August 27th, 2020, an evening program. And we're reading from Bhagavad Gita as it is, chapter 6, entitled Sankhya Yoga, text 10. Yogi, Yunjita, Satatam, Atmanam, Rahasi, Stita, Ekaki, Yata Titatma, Nirasi, Aparigraha, Yogi Yunjita Satatam, Atmanam Rahasi Stita, Ekaki Yata Chitatma, Nirashir Aparigraha, Yogi Yunjita Satatam, Atmanam Rahasi Stita, Ekaki yata chitatma, Nirasir aparigraha, Yogi yunjita satatam, Atmanam rahasi stita, Ekaki yata chitatma, Nirashir Aparigraha. Yogi Yunjita Satatam. Atmanam Rahasi Stita. Ekaki Yata Chitatma. Nirashir Aparigraha. Nirasir Aparigraha Yogi Yunjita Satatam Atmanam Rahasi Stita Ekakiyata Chitatma Nirasir Aparigraha Anyone Yogi online Yogi like to Yogi Yunji Yunjita Satatam Yogi Yunjita Satatam Atmanam Rahasistiha Shita Stitaha Atmanam Rahasistiha Ekaki Yata Chitatma Ekaki Yata Chitatma Nirashira Parigraha Nirashira Parigraha Yogi Yunjita Satatam Yogi Yunjita Satatam Atmanam Rahasistita Atmanam Rahasistita Ekaki yata chitatma. Ekaki yata chitatma. Nirashira parigraha. Nirashira parigraha. Yogi, a transcendentalist. Yunjita. Must concentrate in Krishna consciousness. Must concentrate in Krishna consciousness. Satatam. Satatam. Constantly. Constantly. Atmanam. Atmanam. Himself. Himself. By the body, mind, and self. By the body, mind, and self. Rahasi. Rahasi. In a secluded place. Secluded place. Stita. Stita. Being so situated. Being so situated. Ekaki. Alone. Alone. Yata Chitatma. Yata Chitatma. 
Always careful in mind. Always careful in mind. Near Ashi. Near Ashi. Without being attracted by anything else. Without being attracted by anything else. Aparigraha. Aparigraha. Free from the feeling of possessiveness. Free from the feeling of possessiveness. Translation. A transcendentalist should always try to concentrate his mind on the Supreme Self. He should live alone in a secluded place and should always carefully control his mind. He should be free from desires and feelings of possessiveness. Purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. Krishna is realized in different degrees as Brahman, Paramatma, and the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Krishna consciousness means concisely to be always engaged in the transcendental loving service of the Lord. But those who are attached to the impersonal Brahman or the localized Supersoul are also partially Krishna conscious because impersonal Brahman is the spiritual ray of Krishna and Supersoul is the all-pervading partial expansion of Krishna. Thus, the impersonalist and the meditator are also indirectly Krishna conscious. A directly Krishna conscious person is the topmost transcendentalist because such a devotee knows what is meant by Brahman or Paramatma. His knowledge of the absolute truth is perfect, whereas the impersonalist and the meditative yogi are imperfectly Krishna conscious. Nevertheless, all of these are instructed herewith to be constantly engaged in their particular pursuit so that they may come to the highest perfection sooner or later. The first business of a transcendentalist is to keep the mind always on Krishna. One should always think of Krishna and not forget him even for a moment. Concentration of the mind on the Supreme is called Samadhi or trance. In order to concentrate the mind, one should always remain in seclusion and avoid disturbance by external objects. He should be very careful to accept favorable and reject unfavorable conditions that affect his realization. And in perfect determination, he should not hanker after unnecessary material things that entangle him by feelings of possessiveness. All these perfections and precautions are perfectly executed when one is directly in Krishna consciousness, because direct Krishna consciousness means self-abnegation, wherein there is very little chance for material possessiveness. Srila Rupa Goswami characterizes Krishna consciousness in this way, and then Prabhupada quotes two verses from the Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, second chapter 255 to 266. These are oft quoted verses by Srila Prabhupada. Anasakta sirishayan yataham upayunjata nirbanda krishna sambande yuktam vairagya muchyate prapanchi kataya budya hari sambandi vastuna Mokshubi Parityago Vairagyam Pogu Katyate. Quote, when one is not attached to anything, but at the same time accepts everything in relation to Krishna, one is rightly situated above possessiveness. On the other hand, one who rejects everything without knowledge of its relationship to Krishna is not as complete in his renunciation. <laughs> A Krishna conscious person well knows that everything, everything belongs to Krishna and thus he is always free from feelings of personal possession. As such, he has no hankering for anything on his own personal account. He knows how to accept things in favor of Krishna consciousness and how to reject things unfavorable to Krishna consciousness. He is always aloof from material things because he is always transcendental and he is always alone having nothing to do with persons not in Krishna consciousness. Therefore, a person in Krishna consciousness is the perfect yogi. Om agana chamirandasya dhananjana shalakaya chakshurmanikam yena tasmai shri gurve namaha 
Shri Chaitanya Mano Vishtam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Svayam Upakadamayam Tadati Svapadantikam Pandeham Shri Guru Shri Uttaparakamalam Shri Guru Vaishnavam Stra Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Saganaragnatan Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvetam Savadutam Parijana Saitan Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sagana Lalita Shri Visakan Vitam Stra Hey Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagatate Gopisha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namos Dute Tapta Kanchana Gaurange Radhe Vrinda Vineshvare Vishabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vanchaka Bhakta Yubhyashtra Kripa Sindhu Vyevacha Patitanan Pavanebhyo Vaishnavebhyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadara Shiva Sadi Gora Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Namo Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Srimate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gwavari Pacharine Nirvishesha Srinivadi Paschatya Desha Tarine. Text 10, Bhagavad Gita, Chapter 6, the t- chapter is entitled Sankhya Yoga. Yogi Yunji Tasatatam Atmanam Rahasistita Ekakiyata Chitatma Nirashir Aparigraha. A transcendentalist should always try to concentrate his mind on the Supreme Self. He should live alone in a secluded place and should always carefully control his mind. He should be free from desires and feelings of possessiveness. Hare Krishna. Prabhupada says things in the purport like, one should always think of Krishna and not forget him even for a moment. Concentration of the mind on the Supreme is called Samadhi or Trance. Um, it is said, Smartavya, that's the combination of Smartavya and Jatu Chit, meaning the purpose of all the regular principles, there's so many regular principles about evening and intoxication and morning program and making a vow to chant the names of God and um, so many regular principles, and they're all meant to support ourselves. To always remember Krishna, never forget Krishna. Always remember God, never forget God. That's the essential principle. That's the absolute principle. Um, Anukulyasin, Sankalpa, Katikulyasin, Barjana. And the essential principle, which is the theme of this purple here, at least our theme. Um, We accept anything favorable for our Krishna consciousness and reject anything unfavorable. And of course, Okay, that's the principle. If I say, if I just trust my mind, what's favorable, what's not favorable, I'll get bewildered because my mind's conditioned. So we, we can we can consult our intuition and always checking things out with the uh, the infallible authorities, Bhagavad Gita, Srila Prabhupada, like that. Um, okay, so Prabhupada talks about samadhi, and through this whole purport and verse, see, we get we get like different conceptions. Uh, Let's say we get fuller, more profound conceptions than the superfluous idea of different concepts. So the idea of samadhi is, uh, okay, someone's meditating in silence, and that could be, that person could be experiencing samadhi. But here it's clear, like like if someone's, if someone's doing bookkeeping for Krishna, if someone's singing loudly in kirtan in his home or on the streets, and absorbed in Krishna consciousness, that is samadhi. Right? So samadhi, it's, it's not this kind of like stereotypical form. I mean, it could be. It could be. We're not, we're not uh, denouncing, you know, that conventional form. But absorption in Krishna consciousness, uh, absorbing, absorbing our mind, samadhi mana, samadhi mana, Krishna bhagavad gita Absorbing our mind, our hands, our legs, our eyes, absorbing our senses in Krishna consciousness. So similarly, okay, so uh, maybe some of you or all of you have heard me 
tell the story in, in January 1977, Yogi Amrit Desai is in a Trila Prabhupada in Bombay, in this Khan Bombay. Yogi Amrit Desai, I guess he was quite a young, he was young at that time. Now I suppose he's well into his 70s. Anyhow, he was, he was already starting to be like a, you know, have a following. He now has his ashram outside of Ocala. Uh, he, he, lived, he lived at Mickey Singer's Temple of the Universe in the 90s, part of the 90s, and he established the uh, Kripalu Center for Yoga and Health. He established it in Pennsylvania in the 70s. Now it's in Massachusetts. We conducted some mantra yoga programs there and some Sattvato transformative communication programs there. Actually, the administra administrators attended our two-day foundational seminar, and they were so pleased that we're really basing things on Bhagavad Gita. And after they took the course, intention walk and all these processes that you're familiar with, but they, and they said, like, they said, yeah, because now in the name of yoga, there's like practically no, they had the realization. Most of them were maybe, uh, you know, maybe even older than myself like that. And they were like the administrators and they said, in the name of yoga, there's almost no connection with the actual source. And so they really appreciated what we were doing in the Sattva courses was truly based on you know, um, the, the, uh, the Bhagavad Gita. And so, um, so Yogi Mitasai was talking to Prabhupada about his guru. His guru was named Kripalu Anandi. I suppose that's where the name, the Kripalu Center came from. Kripalu Anandi, and he said that his guru did a vow of silence for 12 years, a vow of Manavra a vow of silence for 12 years. And when he heard that, Shura Prabhupada immediately replied, oh, he didn't chant? And Yogi Amit Desai said, oh, of course he chanted. So it's, it's a very nice interaction. You can hear the recording, read the chant transcript. Because they both clearly, there was like assumed and agreed. Of course, chanting the names of God is not a violation of the vow of silence. It's a fulfillment of the vow of silence. So again, that might be a, that might be a, that, that might shake the conventional conception. Silence means you don't make any vibration, but that's not the essence of it. Silence means we don't talk nonsense. We don't, we're committed to not make any mundane vibration that entangles ourselves and others further in, in, in material illusion, the illusion that we're not this body. So, okay, so similarly here, so yeah, so similarly here, we're talking about one should, um, he should, one should live alone, okay? So again, we have like our comment that one should live alone. But then as the purport goes on, um, Prabhupada talks about one who's all, always alone. And it's not the stereotypical conception, right? So like, uh, it, it means one, one who is not interested in, one who's not interested in any association that will entangle him or her further in, in the mundane drama of material society, fr friendship, and love. Material, material society, friendship, and love. And that, of course, is the foundation of dedication. It's a foundation of dedication to, to cultivating true spiritual love and sharing that with others. So from that point of view, from, from, from that point of view, yeah, that like Srila Prabhupada in New York City, came to New York City in, late in 1965. He's with what, 10 million people at the time. So he's completely alone, right? He's not lonely because he's always associating with Krishna. He's also always associate, associating with Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati. He's always associating with Srila Jiva Goswami. But, but from the material point of view, he's, he's alone, like, like the lotus flower. The lotus is in the water, not, not escaping, but the lotus, the lotus flower is untouched by the water. You might say the lotus flower is in the water, but it has no contact with the water. So that's, that's like the more sublime, profound conception of aloneness, okay? It's different than loneliness, right? And so, 
So the conception here, and you probably all, you know, you've heard the descriptions of different qualities, different types of renunciation. And so, you know, the example of the wallet, we get all these examples from Srila Prabhupada. Okay, I find a wallet on the street, I take the money, I take the credit cards for me to enjoy. That's the materialistic mentality. The non-personal conception is this wallet does not belong to me. It's not for me to enjoy. I will not touch it. I walk away. There's something more noble in that. But the supreme conception, like, like even from a mundane morality, the supreme conception, the ultimate renunciation is, is yeah, to renounce the enjoying spirit. This is not for me to enjoy, but it, it, it does belong, to, it, it is for someone to enjoy. Oh, it's, uh, oh, it belongs to Tom Smith. Okay, so let me return the wallet to Tom Smith. Right? If we do that, then we feel, then we feel the best about ourselves. Right? If we just take it for our enjoyment, we might feel some guilt that we need to drink a few beers to numb ourselves to the guilt. Okay? But if we return it to its own, ah, that's, that's it's a very personal conception. Very personal conception. So that's yukta vairagya, as opposed to palgu vairagya. Palgu is like the English word false. It comes from the Sanskrit palgu. False renunciation it means, yeah, we're, we're renouncing in a sense. It's not gross materialism, but we're not realizing the connection of the wallet with the owner. We're not realizing the connection of money with its own, its actual realizing the connection of all energies with the source of all energy, Sri Krishna, the personality of God, to realize the connection and realize how to utilize everything in, in, in a way that pleases Sri Krishna, the personality of God, and that's a yukta by God. We're, not, we're renouncing the enjoying spirit, and we know this art and science, how to engage everything in Krishna's service, whether this house, this body, this mind, this, this relationship, the credit cards in this wallet, etc., this profession, etc., etc. There's a Prabhupada also uses the term marketa by Ragya. I wouldn't be surprised if the English word monkey comes in from the Sanskrit marketa, which means monkey in Sanskrit. Marketa by Ragya, the idea is Prabhupada, even in the name of Vaishnavism, someone will go with no clothes into the forest and completely renouncing the world, but they jump from tree to tree and they have one, they have one sexual encounter after the next, jumping from tree to tree like the monkeys. And so the monkeys are very renounced. They have no clothes. They don't have a fancy wardrobe. But what, what are they doing in the forest? And so many spiritualists are like that too. Then there's another type of palgu or false renunciation. Smashana Vairagya. Again, I wouldn't be surprised if the English word smash comes from the Sanskrit smashana, which means graveyard or where, where the bodies are smashed. So smashana Vairagya is like if we go to a funeral. We go to a funeral, and then at the funeral we see like this dead body. The dead body, which is this, this was my dear relative, this was my dear friend, this was my dear colleague. Dead by me get that's going to happen to me, and then we become renounced. Yeah, I don't, I'm not going to live a frivolous life of eat, drink, and be merry anymore. I'm going to dedicate to my, myself to my, that which is truly important spiritual life. And so, at the graveyard, we have some smashing of vairagya, but then a day, two days, a week, two weeks later, we forget about it and we just go back to life as normal till the next till, till the next funeral ceremony next year okay so yukta vairagya that's the real thing that's the complete vairagya okay so okay we can talk about money as, as danielle mentioned at the beginning the, the sanskrit word for money or the spiritual form is lakshmi i've had many clients i've had many clients where we coach around money finance and abundance prosperity like that. Um, 
I'm not going to say I specialize in it, but the principles of transformative coaching are universal. And what many of them have found helpful, and many of them, of course, they don't have any conception of like, you know, Vedic principles. I mean, they might have a natural conception because these are universal principles, but they're not familiar with the term Lakshmi or things like that. And so, and so um, many times they're, they're very enthralled, they're very impacted by the conception. They're very impacted by the conception of um, um, money, essentially, it's an energy. And, and, and there's an energetic source. It's an energy and it's, 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 it's a person. It's a person. Just like even in English, there's terms like father time, mother nature, this person. So the person of, yes, the, okay, the ancient Vedas, they describe money as is a person. It's a female person. It's a demigoddess named Lakshmi. And for many clients, I can think of one client, so maybe six, seven years ago, and she was very moved by that. Because then that really moved her to take a look at What's her relationship with this person, Lakshmi? What's, we can take a look, what, what's, what's my relationship with this person, Lakshmi? Okay, rather than, good, because like, okay, is my relationship with Lakshmi? Let's say, okay, let, let's just say, if, if we had a person in our life, there's a person in our life, and our attitude towards the person, and the person feels that, our attitude is, our attitude is, I. I wish I just didn't have to deal with you. I wish that I, I wish that I just, I wish that I, I just didn't have to manage you. You're such a headache. So would, would that person be like attracted to spend more time around us and engage? Okay, no, so really, so like if our, if our relationship with the person, money, is kind of like, you're such a headache to, what an anxiety you are just to see you. Oh my God, I wish you would just go away and leave me alone. What message are we sending to this person? Right? We're not sending the message, please, please come to me more, come to me more. Okay. All right. Um, it is our, what's our relationship with Lakshmi? It's a relationship around anxiety. I need, I need to hoard you, miserly. I'm I'm like I'm like a money monk, and I'm just aloof. I don't I don't care enough about these mundane material things like money. What what's the message we're sending? And then of course, not artificially, but we can at least open up to like oh okay, my relationship with the personality of prosperity, the personality of opulence and success, Lakshmi. I can open up to. Okay, Lakshmi becomes so pleased. Lakshmi becomes so pleased when we engage her in the service of Krishna. When we engage her in the service of Lord Chaitanya's Sankirtan movement. Lord Chaitanya's first concert was named uh, Lakshmi Priya. Lakshmi Priya. Okay. So, uh, uh, so Lord Chaitanya is so dear to her. So when we engage Lakshmi in the service of Narayan, we, gave, we engage Lakshmi in the service of Vishnu, then she's very pleased. And she's, then she's smiling upon us. Then she's smiling upon us. And that, of course, that's the mentality that goes along with the theme in this verse of being free from possessiveness, right? Uh, free from possessiveness, because we get we get, ah, yes, this is not my money. Now, this is not my money that can be misapplied in, a, in an irresponsible way. So it doesn't matter what I do with it. It's material. No, 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 no this is, um, okay, this is Lakshmi. And, 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 and Krishna's, Krishna is giving me this Lakshmi. Lord Chaitanya is giving me this Lakshmi through his servant Srila Prabhupada. And, and um, kind of like 
I'm not owning Lakshmi, I'm not possessing, um, but um, I can see that I'm like a steward. I'm, I'm, I'm the steward. Um, I'm, I'm renting and I have a responsibility to take, to take very nice care, you know, to take very nice care of these resources, to utilize them in a way that will be pleasing for its true owner, its true source, Krishna, Vishnu, Narayan, Lord Chaitanya. And so, yes, yeah. I know myself kind of like, you know, to say, oh, I'm, I'm spirit soul, I, um, I'm not my body. And we understand even this term, my body, it's not really accurate. It's actually Krishna's body. It's all made of Krishna's energy. And sometimes, I mean, we could misinterpret that and go to a place of, so it doesn't matter what I do with my body. But I know for myself, the more I realize that I'm spirit, soul, servant of Srila Prabhupada, servant of Krishna, then the more I want to take really good care of my body. Because this isn't just a lump of matter, or it's not David Wolf or David Wolf's. It's, uh, no, this is, this is actually meant for divine purpose. So that when I have that conception, rather than the conception that I am the body, or even though it's my body, when I have the conception, this is meant for divine service to Krishna, the temple of God, then I'm more attentive to care for it very preciously. So similarly, so similarly with money or Lakshmi that comes our way to the extent that I realize, the extent that I realize, okay, this, this is meant for divine purpose. And divine purpose, it can take the form of distributing, using the Lakshmi to prepare and distribute prasad, using it for, uh, to purchase transcendental books for distribution. It could be, it could, divine purpose can look like paying the electric bill. It can look like paying for clothes for my child. It's about what's the consciousness behind it. And when the consciousness behind it is, I'm using this for the pleasure of Srila Prabhupada, Lord Chaitanya, Sri Krishna, then, then there's not this lower mode possessiveness talked about here. That like, I have to have that for my comfort for my, for my material success, for my image of material success. And then as we cultivate Krishna consciousness more and more, then more and more our relationship with Lakshmi is free from possessiveness. Actually, if I have material possessiveness, it's not Lakshmi, then it's money, right? then it's cash, it's not Lakshmi. And to the extent that I relate to that energy as Lakshmi, and realize myself as spirit soul, spirit soul, spirit soul doesn't need to eat and sleep. If we don't want to artificially imitate them, but we're moving towards that realization. And the spirit soul, servant of Krishna, then, then my, attach, my attachment is to utilize Lakshmi in Krishna's service. My attachment is to serve Krishna with every breath. That's my success. That's my bliss. And the real joy of that the supreme occupation for all humanity is that by which one develops devotional service to the transcendental Lord. And such service must be unmotivated and uninterrupted in order to completely satisfy the self. So, when, when our attachment is purely spiritual, no material possessing, our attachment is purely spiritual. All I want to do is utilize Krishna's energy and Krishna's service. Then no, no material calamity or pandemic or insult or economic crash, no, nothing material can get in the way of me performing devotional service and utilizing this body, Lakshmi Devi, yeah, utilizing everything in Krishna's service. So, um, you know, so I'm not sure if I answered the question of whether to uh, whether to invest in the stock market or real estate. But we we touched on some principles that might be relevant in supporting ourselves 
in in um, in any process around our, our relationship with um, money, Lakshmi, resources. Hare Krishna. I'll read the verse one more time. Yogi Yunjita Satatam Atmana Rahasi Stitam Ekakiyata Chitatma Nirashir Aparigraha. A transcendentalist should always try to concentrate his mind on the Supreme Self. He should live alone in a secluded place and should always carefully control his mind. He should be free from desires and feelings of possessiveness. Hare Krishna, thanks for your presence and attention and association. I welcome any comments, realizations, or questions. Hi, Krishna. Hi, Krishna. Then. So, George, can you mute your computer real quick? Yeah. Sorry, we're going to mute real quick. So I really appreciate you touching on this subject for me at my request tonight. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay, good. Um, so the first time I ever was introduced to the concept of money being personified was in a book called The Richest Man in Babylon. Are you familiar with this book? I've heard the title. I haven't read it. Title. I haven't read it. Yeah. So it's, it's written in the 19... I think it's 1930, it's written in 1930, about a man in Babylon 4,000 years ago, and he gives all these like instructions for um, cures for a lean purse, I think is what it's called, um, to build wealth. And one of the things that he says in the book is, you should make money your slave and make the children of your money your slaves and your children, the children's children of your money slaves. And I always found that so disturbing like the concept of them all being enslaved to me, like all of my money in bondage for, for me, you know, like I always felt that was like really disturbing imagery. Um, so I appreciate you putting emphasis on it being a relationship with a person, but, but maybe, you know, taking a look at that and figuring out how to have a healthy relationship with that person and in relationship to the Supreme Personality, like this person, like we're all serving Krishna together and she's serving Krishna by coming to me or leaving me or whatever, whatever we've got going on. So I like that the focus on it being a personal relationship and developing that personal relationship in a healthy way. Thank you. Thank you, Danielle. Thanks for sharing. Yeah. Yeah. So I've heard the title of the Babylon book. So it's way back from the 1930s. Of course, that's not near as way back as Bhagavad Gita. So the author there, he, he had the conception of money as a person. And here, this is, it would seem a, um, a much more purified conception. Yes, the, the energy, the personality of money, being the pure spiritual demigoddess Lakshmi. And she's she's a devotee of Krishna. It's the same principle with Mother Earth, because it's, it's pretty common these decades to think Mother Earth, but from like this Veda conception, we know that this isn't just like a sentimental romantic thing to say, Mother Earth. Earth is, it's truly a demigod. She's a demigoddess. And there's so many ideas of environmentalism and ecology, and, and some of them might be a little bit helpful. But ultimately, this demigod is Bhumi, just like the demigoddess of prosperity, money is Lakshmi, the demigoddess of earth is Bhumi, and she she becomes joyful and abundant and giving when the inhabitants of earth uh, become uh, engage in devotional service because uh, she she's a devotee of Krishna. That, that's what really makes her happy, and then and then she supplies abundantly naturally, and then everything that's good ecology follows naturally because like of course if we're devotees of krishna and pleasing mother earth in that way we're not going to engage in animal slaughter and all etc etc and um 
so similarly with Lakshmi, she be so it's like it's a, maybe yeah you're, you're getting like like the pure conception of what the Babylon author had had some glimpses of. Yeah, I don't want to enslave anybody. It doesn't doesn't sound right to me, and I don't even think it's possible. It's kind of like trapping a genie in a bottle. It doesn't sound like you're going to end up with a, a good outcome. <laughs> Try to enslave somebody very powerful. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> thanks. Thanks for that, Daniel. Thanks for that. Yes. Right. Yeah. Just like Mother Earth is so powerful. Mother Lakshmi is so powerful. So, okay. So the conception of personhood for money, that's okay. We'll accept that. But then, no, let me, let me serve Lakshmi. Let me serve Lakshmi. How do I serve Lakshmi? Not, not try to make her my slave. Let me serve Lakshmi by, uh, by, by engaging everything in, in her master, Sri Krishna, Hare Krishna. Thank you. Thank you, Danielle. Other comments or questions? Okay, going once, going twice. Hare Krishna, I appreciated your association. Thank you. Thank you, Bhakti Ki, Bhakti 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 Bhagavad Gita Ki Jai, Shri Prabhupada Ki Jai, Hare Krishna.